Many of you may be familiar with the location I'm at now. I'm at McGilligan Point, the most northwesterly point of Northern Ireland and the entrance to Loch Foyle. This area has a rich history of military activity for the past hundred years. And in this video, we're going to look at a rather unique two-story pillbox built during the Second World War to defend the inland beaches of Loch Foyle. <laughs> A quick bit of context then of the strategic importance of McGilligan Point during the war. We have the neutral Republic of Ireland uh, in the distance. We have the Martello Tower. There's a corresponding fortification on the other side. The fast moving water we see in front of us is the entrance to Loch Foyle with the then neutral uh, Republic of Ireland in the background. The site I'm currently standing on was home to an emergency battery of two Mark 7 uh, six inch coastal artillery guns. Situated a couple of hundred metres inland are these two emplacements, each one which would have contained a quick firing 12 pounder gun, the intent of which was to engage fast moving patrol craft or motor patrol boats that would have entered Loch Foyle. Also on the inside of Loch Foyle we have some sandy beaches. Those beaches were laid with beach scaffolding um, and barbed wire because we can see the remains of those at low tide and behind those sandy beaches was a four gun heavy anti-aircraft um, emplacement with radar. Now we get to look at our pillbox in particular. So we can see there are two levels. It's constructed of reinforced concrete. There was a single entrance which was accessed by a steel door uh, in the roof and we can have a look at that in a minute. The formwork used on this, uh, there are signs of wooden planking um, being used, so we can see the, the difference in gaps between the wooden planks. And certainly as the war progressed and uh, building materials got scarcer, that's really when brick and other materials started to get used for formwork. We can see the various stages of pouring, so we have the, uh, the foundation plinth which extends beyond uh, the walls of the pillbox. We then have this lower level, which I'm also going to include as the foundation. It's a little bit cruder, uh, and then when the when the walls were came to be constructed, um, they weren't quite. There was a, a little bit of, um, of of expansion in the in the formwork here, so they haven't quite haven't quite matched up. Possibly suggesting they were done at different times. If we look at the loopholes, uh, quite often loopholes were prefabricated, uh, were made elsewhere and dropped into position to ease construction, both to reduce time, but also to increase the accuracy of, um, of that pour. That wasn't the case, and the loopholes on this pillbox were cast in situ. Uh, on one of the sides, we can see some little steel studs protruding uh, that look like nails. What these most likely are, are these are the remains of the wire ties that we use to tie together both sides of the concrete formwork before the concrete itself was poured um, around a core of reinforcing steel. Uh, the lower level unfortunately um, is completely flooded so we won't be able to get into that however we will be able to go in the trap door at the top and access the top level. So let's move up and have a look. So looking at the entrance to this pillbox. It would have had a steel shutter um, over the top, um, probably for a little bit of weather protection as well. Um, but the, the rear part of this, um, this appears to be a barbed wire picket. You can see the notches um, and you can see the holes where the supporting wire would have gone. So they've improvised um, one side of that with an angle iron um, barbed wire picket. The two hinges still remain for the steel door 
um, however no door itself remains. Um, and as for this bar, well, I'm unsure what that, the purpose of that bar um, would have been. It may have been for, to help secure the door when the door was open, um, or it may, it may have been to uh, um, help the occupants climb down the, the front of the box. And we'll have a look um, at what I mean in a minute. And really, there's nothing, nothing much else to say about the top of this box, um, apart from trying to interpret some of the marks that you may find when you're looking at pillboxes or concrete structures. So we can, hear, we can see here this fan structure. So the way the walls were cast, they were cast into concrete shuttering. Um, so there, was some, there, was, there were two sides of, of wood in this instance, um, tied together with reinforcing steel in the middle, and the concrete was poured. The roof, however, didn't have a top on it, so there was a, an underneath uh, of wooden shuttering, and the sides were made of wooden shuttering. The concrete was poured, and then it was levelled out on top. Um, and in this instance, just looks like it was using a um, a plank or a bit of a bit of wood. Um, so the um, the worker of the concreter then was was tapping and flattening um, the top of the concrete to get it level, and that's that's left us with this um, this fan of witness marks. Uh, and actually, if we're if we're looking at that, we can see that the the fittings um, for this trap door weren't actually fitted at the same time. So we can see here where holes have been hollowed out to put the steel fittings for the hinges um, and that, that has been filled with cement or concrete afterwards. Um, whereas it looks like the, uh, the steel surround of the door actually was, was cast in situ and you can see where, where one of those planks has, has, slipped, has slipped there. Uh, that, foot, that's, um, uh, that ceiling slab itself um, is probably 14, 18 inches thick. Um, right, so if we go down and have a look at the roof of the second level just down here. So we're now on the roof of the lower level and we can see the, the front of the, uh, of the top level that we're, we're just in. And from here it's, it's, it's easier to see the asymmetry of this loophole. So this loophole doesn't actually sit in the centre. Uh, of the pillbox wall. It sits just over to the left and that may reinforce the theory that um, there was a machine gun in, in this end looking through this loophole defending the beaches and these other two were for observation or protection. Um, one thing to note here, so there, there, are, there are no machine gun mounts, there are no shutters in the pillbox, there are no external um, shutters for weather protection or internal shutters. And that, that in itself I think is, um, is quite unusual. Given the exposed location um, it would probably have been important for some weatherproofing um, to have some shutters in this pillbox. Um, if albeit they didn't need shutters for protection from ground attack because it's unlikely they would have, they would have been attacked by troops uh, coming from the sea. Um, but the fact that there aren't any shutters is, is also a little bit unusual. And it was just when I was on the roof um, that I noticed another number of um, of other parts of concrete that um, that intrigued me. So, at each at each of the corners and along the edge, um, there are some lumps of concrete. And what I think these were for is I think these were, were possibly for a, a retrofitted handrail. So, given that this is a nice flat surface and if we're saying that actually this pillbox um, may indeed have been used as an observation point uh, and or as an observation post, it would make sense then that um, there were some handrails fitted just to try and uh, protect the people um, from really stopping falling off whenever they were up here. There are no other signs of, of access or how people would have, would have got up here. Um, it's possible given that on, on this side it doesn't appear, the handrail doesn't appear to extend. Um, so it may be that uh, that we were, they were just able to to walk down, and maybe some wooden steps um, were constructed there. So it's possible on this level that a, there was a there was a handrail. Um, and when I talk about the, the steel ties, this is a it's, it looks like a, a a perfect example of of possibly where that uh, steel wire um, has come through. So yeah, we have the the floor level. 
um, or they say the, the roof level, um, and looking into that part of the pillbox. So descending into the pillbox, we can see that the top layer um, is also filled with rubble and rubbish. Uh, we can see the three loopholes. We can look out onto lock foil and then look at the other uh, embrasure or loophole that was uh, looking down towards the entrance of lock foil. If we look up at the roof, we can see that the roof has also been cast um, or has, has had uh, wooden shuttering used. Uh, quite often you'll see corrugated iron, um, which is sometimes left in situ. Uh, we can see more of those tie marks, uh, those steel ties coming through the concrete here. Um, and really there isn't a huge amount to say about the inside of this pillbox, apart from it is actually quite small. So if you were armed with a, um, a brand machine gun, perhaps back to here, if you had multiple people armed with so this loophole um, and this loophole both had um, support weapons or like machine guns in them, you really would struggle to operate them. So it's possible that this upper layer wasn't actually uh, intended for use um, by machine guns or by weapons. This may indeed um, have been some sort of observation post. Um, it, may have, uh, it may have helped to identify uh, sea mines being dropped. During an air raid it would have given the, uh, given the occupants a certain level of, um, of protection. Or perhaps even there was a single machine gun here covering the beaches. Um, which we can, which we can see out this loophole, um, covering the beaches there, while the other two um, loopholes were for were for observation. Um, now getting down to the layer below me, that entrance is blocked and covered with this uh, modern rubble and detritus, so we're not able to get down there. Um, and there is a single. Uh, step remaining, all the rest have been um, corroded and and destroyed. So a very interesting um, upper level of pillbox. So taking a peek into the lowest level of this pillbox, we can see that it is absolutely filled with with water. I'm looking through the central front loophole and then there are the two. There is this one looking towards the beaches and this one looking towards McGilligan Point. In the wall behind us would have been the entrance to the upper story. Um, so those, uh, that stairway or ladders in the upper story would have led all the way down to this, um, to this bottom level um, down here. But unfortunately filled with rubble, filled with water and totally inaccessible. So as a little way of conclusion then, um, I hope that's been an interesting tour of this double story pillbox at McGilligan Point, where certainly ones that are remaining, it's unique in Northern Ireland, and I haven't seen anything else like it um, around England. There have been very few defensive features we've been able to look at, however, we've been able to look at the construction and the context of where it sits at McGillian Point at the entrance to Lock Foil. And certainly where it is located with the quick firing 12 pounder battery behind us with the defended beaches um, in front of me. Actually it may have been this post served more as an observation post um, than, a, than a full defensive post um, as you would find in often um, defended localities. So here we have a look around the double-storey pillbox at McGilligan Point in Northern Ireland. <laughs>